a product of uh, an inspiration. My high school teacher, uh, Lisa Morneau, is the reason why I do poetry today. She's the reason why I have the confidence to be able to speak in front of other people. Uh, Lisa taught me that my dreams are reachable. She let me know that the things that I had in my mind, as long as I had it in my mind, I could have it in my hands. Spoken word poetry was one of those things for me. And uh, I'm very grateful for that. And that's why some of the, these symposiums are so important. Uh, because I'm a, I'm a lived example of when teachers put their heart into their craft. Uh, this poem that I'd like to share with you is, uh, I actually wrote in high school. It was uh, based on a story, uh, a poem that I had read. It was called, uh, Thanks for Not Killing My Son. It was about a Scarborough mother who, her child was brutally beaten up. And she wrote this satire uh, letter to the, the people, the people who did this to her son. Uh, and this poem came out uh, as an inspiration from, from that poem. This letter will not bring tears, 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 tears to your eyes. This letter will not remind you of me or them. This letter will be an indication to your prophecy. This letter will make you feel uncomfortable. In fact, this letter will pour you a perfect cup of tea. That morning was no different from any other. She quickly cleaned the house while your children fought over who would use the bathroom first. She made anchero. She even saved you some. She placed it on the plate you never touch. That morning was no different from any other. That morning you did not love your wife. That morning you did not love. You were scheduled to leave on a Monday, November 7th to be exact. To you, Monday felt as though it would be the most suitable day since it was, of course, the first day of a new week. A fresh start, a new beginning. How convenient. It was one day after your son's birthday. So thank you for persevering one last birthday. Your suitcases were laid neatly in your room, the only thing that indicated order. You packed some of your children's belongings and choosing what to bring of your boys was easy. But you couldn't decide what to bring to remind you of your firstborn, your eldest child, your only daughter. So you settled for an outdated picture of her playing in the sand. You thought it were funny how her face never seems to change. It must be that smile. Her smile. The next few hours were crucial. In the next few hours, the sun would set. See, I remember you telling me about Judgment Day. Allah said that on the day the world will come to an end, a trumpet will horn, and the sun will rise and fall on opposite ends. So I watched the sun set for the first time that night, and I placed trust in God, yet I found it odd. The sun it just continued its natural course, yet my world did not. Since you could not afford to buy your children games, you made them up. Your favorite glide. We pretend that the floor was ice and I, the world's best skater. See, we would glide for hours, and I tried that night. I tried to glide, but the tiles grew thorns. I wondered if you could see the blood streaming through the bottom of my feet as I walked you to that door. I realized then that the air was moist, my heart was in my throat, and gravity did not exist. The next few minutes were crucial. You hug the boys, you take a step towards me, and I take two back. I pleaded if I could come with you. You said, don't be foolish. You're a princess. Watch the world travel right before your eyes. So I did. By the window, I waited. Just like you said I should, I waited. By the phone, when you said you would call, I waited. By the door, when you said you'd arrive, I waited. Foolishly, but patiently, I waited. So thank you for making me wait years to see your face again. Karma, I suppose, for I made you wait nine months before you could see my face for the first time. Thank you for being there for my first graduation, but where were you for my last? Why did I have to watch everybody else's fathers just gleam at their daughters? Where were you for the first time I cried over a boy? For the first time I cried over you, where were you? May I thank you once more. For it was you who made me appreciate the brisk air, your winter's breath upon my summer's face that altered my perception of hereditary rights. See, I may look like you, even walk with my foot outward like you, 
but I stand in a manner that you cannot possibly endure. I stand for unconditional love, and you may be the cause of my nature, but I was nurtured to never abandon the ones that I love, and I watched you turn your back on love. I wonder, is it foolish that I still love? Seven years, it has taken me exactly seven years to finish writing you this letter. I never planned on finishing. This letter is written in your favorite color. See, I still remember that your favorite color is blue. Could we sing and work through all of the things that we cannot undo? There are days where I picture you in a suit saying, don't mind if I do. You're the first guy I said I love you to and truly meant it. I gave you my heart and I watched you bent it. So as I write this letter, I write with an indent. The space indicates the dent in my chest. How could you walk out on your own flesh? I'm your descendant. You don't even know how many hours I've spent, how many hours I've resent, how many times I've tried to take off your garment. You don't even know how many hours I've spent, how many hours I've spent, how many hours I've spent to take off your garment, to take off your garment, to take off your garment. For my father, who I still love so much, thank you for the lessons you taught me. To all of you who are parents uh, or caregivers, uh, remind your child, your caregiver, that you love them, because you never know when they might need it. Uh, thank you so much. My name is Salvador. This is Unity.